Hi, my name is Jim Stein. I'm with Aquarium Design, and you probably know me as the LA Fish Guy. Welcome to my little short series of videos referred to as Blue Vet. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that I've discovered along the way, which have to do with different um, manufacturers' products. Um, the first thing we're going to start off with is what's referred to as evaporative cooling. But before I go into that, the typical means of cooling in an aquarium, if not just opening the lid on the top, would be to add a refrigeration unit, anywhere from a sixth horsepower up to a half horsepower unit. Uh, these units unfortunately do draw a goodly amount of electricity, driving your electric bill up anywhere from twenty to possibly a hundred dollars a month. Um, many of the aquariums that I've installed have them. Uh, the equipment on them, whether it be water pumps or lights, tend to add heat to the water and one needs to maintain a particular temperature and a refrigeration unit is the typical means of how to control that. Um, I came across what's called evaporative cooling kind of by accident. This tank behind me has had a refrigeration unit on it for probably the last 12 years and one day it stopped working. Unfortunately it's in a particular spot that I can't get at that refrigeration unit, which is a bit of a mistake on my part. So as an alternative, I came across what's referred to as evaporative cooling. I've known of this for years, but for whatever reason shrugged it off as probably not being very efficient or effective. But the reality is it is efficient and it is effective and it's considerably cheaper. Evaporative cooling essentially is the means of using a fan to blow water across the water surface. As that water evaporates, it loses heat. Uh, it'll also lose some of the water, but the cost of the fan is really insignificant, anywhere from $9.99 to maybe $25. The cost of operating it, I'm sure, is pennies over the course of a month. Um, so I've employed this on a number of different applications, actually four of them, which I'd like to go ahead and show you. So let me start off first by showing you that's the refrigeration unit that's on the tank that we just saw. It sits back here, unfortunately behind this 100 gallon water container that holds the salt water that does the automated water changes for the tank inside the house. Now granted the plumbing does have union fittings and such on it, but I'd have to drain the tank, disconnect all those fittings and then pull that unit out of there and I just for whatever reason whether it be laziness or uh, whatever decided I didn't want to do that. So we went about uh, employing the evaporative cooling approach. So down below the aquarium in the cabinet below is the sump um, for the reef system. You can see the red lights are part of the uh, hog algae scrubbers. Uh, there's a protein skimmer in there. Uh, there's all the equipment for the uh, apex system, water pumps, etc. And there's this wooden rack, we'll call it, and that's what actually supports a $9.99 fan purchased from Target. And what that does is it simply just blows air down into the sump. And again, that, that movement of air will increase the amount of evaporation that occurs in there which in turn, as the water evaporates, it loses heat. Uh, and that's how we're able to drop the water temperature. This particular tank typically runs around 78 degrees, but in the summertime, it can get a little bit warmer, pushing over 80 degrees. Um, this little fan more than capably controls the temperature set at 80 degrees. As a matter of fact, the uh, apex controller is set to operate the fan as opposed to the chiller 
the apex will make sure that the temperature doesn't go above 80 degrees and when it drops down to probably 79.5 it turns the fan off thus decreasing the amount of evaporation. This tank is hooked up with float switches uh, that draw from a large reservoir of fresh water so the evaporation is automatically compensated for by pumps that move water uh, from that reservoir inside the house uh, into the sump. So that's really not that big an issue for me. So again, it's a $9.99 fan from Target that I clamped onto a wooden rack uh, that I built outside here uh, to support the fan itself. Now I do want to make just a slight little note. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to incorporate a little safety harness or some kind of a strap that if for whatever reason uh, the clamp, whether it be the metal spring inside there or the wooden rack itself were to break and no longer support the fan so that it wouldn't fall down inside the sump. So that would probably be one thing that I may want to consider uh, incorporating into this tank. This here is my small JBJ 45 gallon rimless frag tank out here in the garage. You wouldn't think that a small tank would have as big a, a heat issue, but in fact it does. Uh, the garage gets kind of warm during the summertime, and this tank does develop a little bit of a uh, temperature problem, peaking up around 82 degrees. Uh, as my little coral frag tank, I didn't really want the temperature to go that high, so this tank having a filter compartment built into the back, um, we ended up just simply clamping on another of those um, desktop clamp-on fans that blows water across its surface. Uh, the evaporation in this tank um, does occur as well, and in this particular tank it's a little bit more severe because it's a smaller tank uh, and it has to draw from that reservoir there in the back. Uh, so evaporation is something that you will have to deal with on any of these tanks that you put this fan on. Uh, this tank does not have a lid on top of it or a cover, uh, so it's a totally exposed. And the evaporation, again, is fairly significant. What we're going to end up doing is probably hooking up some type of an ATO to this tank because due to its smaller size, that evaporation is a pretty radical effect on the salinity at least more so than really what I'd like it to do. Um, so again, this clamp-on fan, which is actually clamped uh, to the tank sitting behind it, I probably could have clamped it on through here, but that might expose the clamp itself a little, to, uh, a little too much to uh, corrosive salt water, which ultimately uh, that metallic spring in there could rust and uh, uh, that may fall in there. Once again, it would probably not be a bad idea to create some type of a tether uh, so that if this fan or clamp were to come loose, that fan itself would not uh, fall into the aquarium. Uh, I did have a light pr previously fall in there, and electricity and water just don't mix, and salt water in particular is very corrosive. Um, so this fan here quite capably uh, cools this tank down and uh, this fan here is now hooked up also to my Apex Neptune Systems controller where the fan doesn't come on uh, until it reaches 80 degrees uh, and then it goes back off at about 79. So I'm able to control the temperature to a pretty specific range and at the same time minimize the, the increased amount of evaporation that would occur. You can see that Scott employs these same inexpensive clamp-on fans on his 500-gallon coral reef tank. One unit is positioned on the light rack in the lower right-hand portion of the screen. There is a second fan at the opposite end of the tank, and both fans blow air across the water surface of his tank, which keeps his water temperature from going beyond 81 degrees. He, too, uses an automated water top-off system to compensate for water evaporation. GHL is widely recognized for the most reliable and future-proof aquarium controllers, dosers, and aquarium LED lighting on the market. Designed and manufactured in Germany, all GHL products are built with the highest quality and standards. 
the GHL Profilux 4 raises the bar to a whole new level. Featuring built-in Wi-Fi, the Profilux 4 can be connected to your network wirelessly and be monitored and controlled from anywhere. With integrated ports for temperature, pH, ORP, conductivity, you can monitor virtually anything. Built-in expansion ports and optional flow sensors allow the Profilux 4 to scale to meet the needs of even the most advanced aquarium installations without the need for additional add-on modules. The new GHL Doser 2.1 takes dosing to the extreme with integrated Wi-Fi for wireless management. It includes inputs for level sensors, a temperature probe, and an output for a magnetic stirrer, making it an ideal solution for everything from dosing, automatic top-off, automated water changes, and even automated feeding. The GHL Mitras are the most powerful and flexible LEDs in their class. The 7206's built-in wireless control makes for fast and easy setup, while the GHL Light Composer allows users to easily set up their spectrum and lighting schedule. Six individual LED clusters provide the industry's best blending of LED channels while also providing the best spread. Nine channels of control allow you to tailor your lighting scheme to meet the needs of even the most difficult to keep corals while also bringing out colors in corals and fish that would otherwise remain unseen. All GHL products can be controlled via the GHL Control Center application as well as the MyGHL Cloud Interface, allowing for monitoring, control, and management from anywhere via an internet connection. The unique interface eliminates the need for coding while providing advanced programming functionality unrivaled by the competition. If you're looking for the best controllers, dosers, and lighting on the market, then GHL has a product to fit your needs. For more information, visit AquariumComputer.com. Aquarium LED Mounts manufactures revolutionary articulating mounts for the most popular LED fixtures and pendants. Their unique patent-pending design allows for full articulation of the light. You can rotate the fixture 360 degrees while also tilting it in any direction in order to maximize coverage while reducing shadowing and light bleed onto the viewing panels. They are designed to be used in conjunction with canopies, light racks, and light bars, but can also be adapted for use with light mount arms. The kit includes all the hardware needed to attach to your favorite LED fixtures. Aquarium LED mounts offers articulating mounts for many popular fixtures, such as the GHL Mitra's LX series, Kessel 350, Kessel 360, and AP700 fixtures as well as Ecotex Radeon, AI Hydra 52, and AI Soul fixtures. Custom mounting adapters for other fixtures can be produced upon request. For more information, check out AquariumLEDMounts.com. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein, and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is MyFishTank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's MyFishTank.com. This here is my new coral frag tank uh, that we've just recently set up. Um, I don't have any corals in there. I don't even have the lights on it yet. Uh, there's a number of uh, pieces of live rock that have been drilled for coral frag plugs and such inside here. Uh, but again, this tank is just on the process of uh, finishing its cycle. Uh, its filter system sits down below here. It has a, a protein skimmer. Um, there is a refrigeration unit over here, and even though it's a very efficient version, meaning it's not that strong and it's a little bit more light duty than the typical uh, refrigeration unit, um, but it still will cost money to operate it. Uh, on this particular system, I have also incorporated one of those little fans down there. 
Uh, it is clamped onto the back side of the sump and it blows straight down into the sump itself. Um, it too is hooked up to the uh, Apex Neptune system so it's set to come on probably at about 80 and go off at uh, 79.5. Um, again, minimizing the amount of evaporation that would occur as a result of using it and yet at the same time it keeps the tank within um, a certain particular temperature range. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, evaporation will become an issue going this particular route. This tank at the moment does not have uh, an ATO or an automatic top-off system but uh, that's in the plans and that will be hooked up at some point as well. So once again this type of uh, cooling is very inefficient, very inexpensive relatively efficient um, and easily obtained. Again, uh, Target for $9.99 was the cost of that. Um, so I've employed this on uh, a number of my own tanks as well as I'm beginning to incorporate them or suggest to various service customers uh, that we place this on their tanks as well. And let's go ahead and talk about another one. So typically, this big 400 gallon bow front runs at about 79 to 80 degrees through the regular year. During the summertime, it can run a little bit higher, and in particular, if the air conditioning isn't working properly in the house. Now, recently, this being the tail end of June, uh, I noticed that the tank was running at um, 84 degrees last week when I serviced it. That's a little on the high side and about a degree warmer than what it might normally be on a typical hot day. Uh, I began to wonder what was the source of the problem. Was it the uh, circulation water pump? Was there just something else going on such as the ambient temperature in the house? Uh, maybe it was higher? Um, it bothered me because at that temperature the fish get a little stressed out. Um, I decided to come the next day and I was surprised to find that the tank was running at 86 degrees that particular day. Now that's just way too warm. So I did stick that fan on there. Uh, it seemed to have helped quite a bit actually, surprisingly so. Uh, it's now brought the temperature down to 81 degrees and I know today uh, I don't feel the air conditioning working in the house and granted it might be a little bit warmer outside or a little bit cooler outside um, I still think the fan uh, is having a significant benefit on there I will tell you though that the evaporation on the tank has increased I've already had to add five gallons and I'm getting ready to add an additional five more gallons of fresh water to compensate for the amount of evaporation that occurred here in the last week and as it turns out, the five gallons that are currently put in there brings it up within a half inch of the water fill or the running water level line. So if I was to put another five gallons in, it would end up ultimately being too much. So I now have a backup here that I'll place down in the garage uh, that I'll have available for the next time. But I should plan on every week replacing at least five gallons of evaporated water. And so as you can see, that fan is just simply clamped on to the end of the sump down there. Uh, it was purchased from Target for $9.99. So it's a very cost-effective source, especially if the chiller unit isn't helping the situation out. And so there you go. Evaporative cooling, very efficient, very inexpensive to obtain, and very inexpensive to operate. Stay tuned as I provide more little insights, tips and tricks, whether it be um, products that you can use for solving problems or just little inexpensive alternatives to other normal approaches. Until then, keep moving forward.